Once I was lost in sin I had no peace within To save my weary soul I knew not how But Jesus came to me And by His grace I'm free Now it's different Oh, so different now It's different now Since Jesus saved my soul It's different now Since by His blood I'm whole Old Satan had to flee When Jesus rescued me Now it's different Oh, so different now Yes, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. It's always great to have guest speakers in this devotional time. And thank God for Brother Ed and Sister Cheryl Jenkins, who have a great ministry and outreach to prisoners, former prisoners and inmates and their families and others who want to grow in grace through their correspondence program, doing a great work for God and right now, it is my joy and my pleasure to introduce Brother Ed Jenkins. God bless you, Brother Ed. In 1 Samuel chapter 20, beginning in verse 41, we read, And as soon as the lad was gone, David rose out of a place toward the south and fell on his face toward the, to the ground and bowed himself three times, and they kissed one another and wept one with another until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and thee, and between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. You're probably very familiar with this story. Uh, you know, Saul was the king of Israel, but because he had disobeyed God, God repented that he had made him king. And so then David was anointed king. And, but in fact, in spite in spite of the fact that he had been anointed king, David was faithful to Saul. But Saul became jealous of David because David was victorious in battle and the people praised him and they loved him. And this made Saul jealous, so jealous, in fact, that he wanted to kill David. And he threw a javelin at David. And so David left. And Jonathan, David, Saul's son, Jonathan, loved David. And, and David loved Jonathan. They had this very special bond together, this special friendship. And they... They came up with this plan, and Jonathan wanted to help David. And he said, well, you hide out in this meadow behind this rock, and I'll shoot an arrow. And if I shoot it, you know, depending on where it lands, you'll know if it's safe to come home or if you should leave because Dad, my father still wants to kill you. And we can only imagine the anticipation David felt as he hid behind that rock that day. And Jonathan came out, and he drew his arrow, and he put it into the bow, and he pulled the bow back, and he fired it. And just imagine David as he watches this arrow flying through the air, depending on and knowing that wherever it lands is going to tell him if it's safe to come home or if he's going to have to leave everything that's familiar, everything that he loves, and have a life of, of exile. And, we, and in, this, in the verses that we read here, we read that, that the arrow went, fur, went out past the, the mark that they had decided on, and so David knew that he had to leave. And as they're saying goodbye to one another, you can see, you imagine the disappointment and, 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 the, and so forth, that the emotions that David felt, knowing that he was going to have to leave, and they, they wept and they hugged and they, they told each other goodbye and prayed for, that God would bless over one another. And you know, as, in this life, we're going to face discouragement. We're going to face disappointments. But you know, what do we do when we do that? Do we give up? Do we quit? Do we just say, I, I'm through with it, I'm not going to do anymore? Well, if we look at what David, how David handled discouragement, David had a lot of discouragement. This wasn't the only discouragement David had. David's daughter was raped by her stepbrother. David's son tried to overthrow his kingdom, and he had to go into hiding again. He had to leave again. And David faced a lot of discouragement, but how did he face it? And, you know, I think we can learn from this because, first of all, we need to understand that life has discouragement in it. We're going we're gonna to face discouragement in life. We live in a fallen world where sin abounds. And wherever sin is, there's going to be discouragement. It doesn't matter if it's our sin or if it's someone else's sin. Sin always brings discouragement. 
And so as long as we're living in this world, we're going to face discouragement. And so the first thing we need to know is that it's just a part of life, okay? It may not be our fault. It may not be anything we've done, but we're going to be discouraged. And that's just a part of living in this world. The second thing we can learn is from David is that he always did the right thing. You know, David, even though Saul was pursuing him and Saul wanted to kill him, David never retaliated. He never did anything against Saul. In fact, one time David and his men were hiding in a cave and Saul came into the cave. And it was like God delivered him right into the, to David's hands, but he didn't kill him. The only thing he did was, was cut a little of the hem off of his robe. And later we read in, in Samuel that, that, they, that Saul and his men were asleep in their camp and David and his men crept into the camp while they were sleeping. And again, another opportunity to kill Saul and his entire army. But Saul simply, uh, David simply took his spear and his crews of water and left. And he said, how can I harm God's anointed? So David always did the right thing. He always did God's will. And the third thing we learn from David is David looked to the Lord for comfort. The book of Psalms is just full of David pouring out his heart to God and, and just expressing his pain and his heartache and just looking to God for healing and for comfort. So we can do the same thing. And so we're going to face... We're going to face discouragement. I, I recently went through a very discouraging time. And we're going to face discouragement. But, you know, we need to remember, first of all, that we live in a fallen world. And we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Okay? We're God's children, and we belong to him. We've been called out, if you will. Secondly, we need to do like David, follow his example, and always do the right thing. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't do anything that would disappoint our Lord. Just but do whatever he wants us to do and do what will glorify him and exalt him. And then finally, we can look to the Lord for comfort because he knows what we're going through. He's in control of every situation and he's always there to comfort us and to bring us through whatever we're going through in a way that will exalt and glorify him and will draw us closer to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Ed. That really touched my heart and I know many, many people We'll be very thankful that you said that today. Let's go to prayer. Father, we thank you for each devotional that's given. And today, Brother Ed has, has really uh, touched our hearts. And I pray, Lord, that you will speak through him to us by the word of God, by the Holy Spirit. While our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, would you right now, if you don't know Jesus as your own personal Savior, trust him. Just ask him into your heart. Just pray from your heart something like this. Dear God. I admit that I'm a lost sinner. I need a Savior. Right now I want Jesus to come into my heart and save me. Take away my sins and take me to heaven when I die. And if you prayed that prayer, won't you just allow us the privilege of helping you? Let us know. We're going to rejoice with you. And then also if you're a soul winner, we'd love to know about that. Let's pray for others. Lord, we pray for all the people right now who need you to do something for them. Suffering hurting people all around us, folks that are sick, folks that are depressed, discouraged, otherwise challenged. Help them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, it's different. So different now. Old Satan had to flee when Jesus rescued me. Now it's different. Oh, so different now. God bless you. Have a great day. You are listening to From the Shepherd to the Sheep Daily Devotionals. This is a ministry of Central Baptist Church in Woodbridge, Virginia. If you would like to learn more about our ministries, you can find us online at cbcwoodbridge.org. You will also find many other helpful resources there, including preaching, devotionals, and songs. We thank you for listening to this devotional, From the Shepherd to the Sheep.